And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Cockton High School, home of the Cougars, for some exciting afternoon high school baseball here on Monday. My name is Michael Betteridge. I'll be here atop the dugout with Coach Rick Little. Coach will be making the calls on this game. Coach, what do you think about this one? Historically, these have been two of the top programs in the county. Last year, at the end of the 2023 season, they were ranked number one and two, respectively. Catoctin one, Middletown two. A lot of returning players back, a lot of CMC selection players back. So I look for a great ball game, a very competitive ball game. You know, we were up here and watched Catoctin put a few balls in play and score a lot of runs. And the conversely happened, Middletown playing Tuscarora, they were three hit and shut out one to nothing. So I think those young men, the Knights, are going to be anxious to get to the plate and swing the bat and get some hits. All right, we'll step aside for our first break and get ready for our opening pitch after this. local American Legion Post 168 in Thurmont is amazing. Not only do they support local high school sports on the radio, but they have great food, great fun, and they constantly serve our community in so many ways. Check out their Facebook page, American Legion Post 168, to find out about their exciting events. And be sure to say thank you for supporting our local community. And don't you forget to say thank you every time you see them for their selfless sacrifice in military service to our country. Thanks, American Legion Post 168. We salute you. Everyone in Thurmont knows and respects Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. met last year, Catoctin swept the series, but that was with the senior pitching sensation, Joey McManus, and the solid senior lineup. Uh, to this 2024 baseball team is a team that keeps bringing up talent, and this team is laden with nine seniors, so we, it, it seemed like a young team, but... It's a good mix of juniors and seniors this year. We do have one 10th grader for the Catoctin Cougars, first baseman Mason Farrell in the mix. But I'll tell you what, Middletown, if you look at their roster and you look at their returners, it's kind of a scary roster. And that includes Tyler Hatt, who's going to be the starting pitcher for Middletown today. Last season, .69 ERA and a 5-0 record. So it'll be interesting to see how the Catoctin batters approach him. Uh, on the mound for Catoctin, is Gavin Watkins. We saw Gavin the other night pitch two solid innings. So a pretty good fastball, and then has to change speeds. But I'll tell you, you look at this uh, Middletown lineup led by Joey Nicholson. He'll he'll lead off. He last season batted 466 Woo. and one of county leaders in RBIs with 19. So yeah. They got a lot of returners that I wrote notes on. As they come up, I'll try to talk about last year and then, you know, to think about high school and especially the development, the physical development of these young men from sophomore to junior to senior year mm -hmm. and with the off-season conditioning and training that most of them do. Again, 
should be a super competitive game today. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things, one of the factors that uh, unfortunately plagues this game is injuries. And uh, it's especially true here at Catawba High School Spring Sports with Cougars losing two of their top athletes here in the spring season. Uh, Taylor Smith in softball and Logan Malakowski for the uh, for the season. Logan was a senior. He'd been a dominating presence on the mound at the plate and in center field, but the season ended with an unfortunate snowboarding accident in Colorado. Yeah, and, you know, injuries to key players is especially impactful in the smaller schools, the 1As, such as Katoxi. Now, Middletown's a good size 2A school. Again, some key personnel things, if it happens this spring, could affect them, but right now it looks like they're healthy and ready to go. And we're about ready for the first pitch. And the aforementioned right fielder, number 10, Joey Nicholson, steps in. Bats right-handed against the right-handed pitcher, Gavin Watkins of the Cougars. First pitch bounces in the dirt. Ball one. It's a little breeze up here on the mountain. Yeah, but it's not as cold as last oh, week. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I had to take my jacket off, to be honest with you. It was about 55 degrees when I rolled in here. Nice high fastball called strike up at the letters. One ball, one strike. Clear blue skies, not a cloud in the sky as far as the eye can see. Beautiful day for spring baseball. Well oh, hit. That ball's hit deep, hit well, and it is over the left field fence. A uh, lead so off home run. run. Joey Nicholson. You were right. Yep. Solid. And that was no accident from the bat. It appeared it was just a matter if it could fly the distance in this chillier weather. You don't always get the carry that you'll get later in the spring and the summer. But boy, there was no doubt about that one. Joey Nicholson, lead off solo home run, gets the Knights on the board, their first run of the season after being shut out in their season over and over by Tuscarora. First pitch high and inside, glances actually off the umpire. DJ getting all the way back to the screen to pick it up. Speaking of the Catoctin Lady Cougars, they're playing Middletown, obviously, down over the hill. I'll try to keep track of that game for us. Off the handle, and it's looped in the left, right center field. And can of corn there for center fielder Ethan George off, and the first out. And that'll bring in Brett Lucas. Brett. That right hand plays first base. Brett was an honorable mention all CMC last season. 20 RBIs, 19 hits, and a 339 batting average. Pretty impressive. Yep. Bit high fastball, foul back. So we've got Gavin Hughes on the mound uh, starting off here in the rotation. So we're getting a little bit of an understanding. Last Friday, they started out with Worth, leadoff pitcher. Now it's Hughes. Actually, Gavin Watkins. Michael. Watkins, I'm sorry. Yep. Solid line drive to right field. The right fielder had it played well. We'll call that a line drive out or fly out to the right fielder. Well played by Braden Grable over there. We talk about he continues to play that right field line tight as he did against Liberty last week. Stepping in shortstop, Freddie Diaz. Freddie also Ooh. bats right-handed. Got hit in the back. First pitch, hit by pitch. So with two outs. Freddie jogs down to first base. Catcher Andrew Raymond steps in.
catcher had his gear on. His shin guards was getting ready to go out on the field. Uh, then stepped it back, but all of a sudden, he, the left-hander has to step into the duty right now. First pitch, Brady's off. Throw. Good throw, just a bit late though. He got a good jump on that one, Coach. Sure did. He took off before the ball even released the pitcher's hand. Yeah. High leg kick from Gavin enabled him to get a couple of strides. Foul ball up over our heads into the trees off the third baseline. One ball, one strike to count to Andrew. Shifton keeps looking over the dugout. He is mic'd up with Coach Franklin. I don't think he is. No? We talked about that when we were here at Liberty. They're looking over every pitch. He can be mic'd up. So he's signaling him in from the yes. dugout? Yeah. Liberty was mic'd up. Inside. Ball. Two balls, one strike to Andrew. This be big right here. Gavin, get out of this without surrendering, surrendering a second run in the top of the first. Runners in scoring position. Base hit drives him in. Boom. Oh. A one hopper into the glove of the second baseman. High fastball, as you said, right to the second baseman. And we had one hit. A solo home run to lead off the game, and as we get ready to move into the bottom of the first, it's one nothing. Knights. We'll be right back. We'll be right back after this break. And a message from our wonderful sponsors. bikes are the latest trend in urban and suburban transportation. Pedal or throttle, exercise or relax. E-bikes are everywhere now in our area. Fredericktown Yamaha Cycle Company is Frederick County's largest supplier of pedal-assisted e-bikes. Fredericktown Yamaha is a supplier of Yamaha, Giant, and intense electric bikes. From open road to crosstown commutes, mountain bikes, and more, Fredericktown Yamaha specializes in two wheels and a motor. Since 1975, located just off Urbana Pike in Frederick. Check out our website at fredericktownyamaha.com. Fredericktown Yamaha, where the fun begins. Standing with the Cougars coming to play coach. Yep, Tyler Hep warm, Hep warming up for Middletown. As we said uh, last season, 5 0 record, 0.69 ERA. He did pitch last week against Tuscora in their 1 0 loss. They only allowed four hits, so I don't know exactly how many innings he went, how many pitches he has yet to throw today. That I'm anxious to see how these Cougar batters approach this pitcher. And I said the Knights have, Knights have a lot of their players from last season back. Third baseman Hunter Barnes returns. First baseman Brett Lucas returns. Shortstop Freddie Diaz returns. So. And stepping in, Brian Green. That was a good. That was a good uh, baseball team. Went deep into the playoffs in the 2A, and 
Lost two to one against Poolsville in the regionals. First pitch swing and lifts it down the left field line. On a hop, Brian Green rolls in for a stand up double. Nice piece of hitting by the left hander. Just served that ball up over the third baseman's head. It rolled right down the line. So with nobody out, the tying run, second base. And DJ Shipkin steps in, catcher. Looks like he's way up in the box, showing bunt. Let's see if they could get some movement out of the uh, Middletown infielders, see if Green can steal third behind them, but not on that pitch. Second pitch, also taken for a ball. The strategy also gets inside the pitcher's head. He's worried about the, a lot of different things. As that ball is coming out of his hand, that batter goes into that bunt stance. Three, you know? It can be a good strategy to rattle the pitcher. And as you've pointed out, a good strategy to move the infield around. Yep, get a little movement, puts it in play. Okay, the catcher calls timeout. He wants to talk to his pitcher, make sure they're on the same page. Bottom of the first, Middletown leads with one to nothing. The tying run for the Cougars at second base. And lead off single left field. DJ 3 and 0 shows the bunt, takes ball four. So again the Cougars taking advantage of every bat and every pitch. And to get see, a runner on. See what Coach Franklin does here. You know, sometimes with Garrett Worth coming up, do you want to have first base open or occupied. The next batter, Garrett. Called strike. Yeah, look. Not sure if it was a called strike or Jake offered. Jake Bell steps in, second baseman, bats right handed. Well, he was showing button pulled that back back. Just like that. The throw down the second, not in time. But it was close. Great throw. Yeah, it was. It was a rock. Andrew Raymond showing off that arm from his catcher position. Yeah, he was in the squat when he rifled that one. That kid's strong. Jake. No balls, two strikes to count. And with second coven, covering, trying to keep uh, Bryant... Green close that's at second. That big hole over there on the right side. Yeah, almost got a balk on that last one there, Coach. Pitcher's got a question. He's motioning in to his I think he's there. asking for the count. Okay. Scoreboard says one and two. Sure does. Shot down. Now right at the head of his coach. Almost got him. Coach Franklin showing off his agility. Yeah, good reflexes, that. coach. Fastball. Well yeah. hit by Jake Bell. Okay, now the umpire's talking to the pitcher about going to his mouth while he's in touch with the rubber. If he's got to lick his fingers like that. He has to do that while not in contact. In the dirt. Runs the count to even. Two balls, two strikes now. Again, that right side wide open. Oh! 
throws him, called strike mm. three. Is that a curveball? Looked like a little cutter. Yeah. Type action, late action. Yeah, it had some movement. Yep. Brings up Garrett Worth, left fielder. Garrett, big ninth the other night with two doubles. And those were the only two hits of the game for the Cougars, but they managed to produce eight runs on two hits. First that pitch swing, slow grounder. To shortstop. The first in time. Good throw. But it does move the runners up. Yep. Slow ground ball to the shortstop. Nice play by Freddie Diaz, showing a nice arm strength also. 6-3 if you're scoring at home. And that brings up sophomore Mason Farrell. First baseman Mason bats right-handed also. Runners at second and third and two outs. As the wind kicks up right into our face. It's the windiest place on the planet out here in this baseball field. I'm not going to complain, though. Coach Franklin gives us a great vantage point up here on top of the third Absolutely. base dugout. I feel like I'm on top of the action. High fly ball to center fielder. Looks, it looks easy playable, and he makes and the catch. Yep. F8 scoring at home. So they sh Cougars strand two. After one complete, it's one nothing Middletown. We'll take a break and be back for the top of the seven. Thermont Country Kitchen, conveniently located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. It's just like home, only they do the dishes. Ha! Family owned and operated since 1984, Thermont Country Kitchen has something for everyone. Handicap accessible for your choice for small gatherings or parties, and we cater too. Thermont Country Kitchen's owners, Sherry and Rob, recently received the You Make Thermont Proud Award. And hey, speaking of awards, their roasted chicken is the best in Maryland, hands down. Thermont Country Kitchen's menu is unbelievable with something for everyone. Check them out today. Thermont Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio. On the go, on the radio, on your mobile device. Cool classic oldies and great high school sports at WTHURadio.com. Here live at the Docton High School. Center fielder Ty Lawson steps in to start the top of the second for the Middletown Knights. Last season, Ty had a 342 batting average. Gavin Watkins still on the mound for the Cougars here in the top of the second. First pitch fouled back over the third base dugout. Second pitch, a little off speed. One hop to second baseman. Jake Bell throws to first, one out. Handcuffed him a little bit there. Fought that one off. Those those type of hits have a lot of spin to them, so you got to really be careful. Jake, a solid second baseman there. Dylan Ledbetter steps in. We're in jersey number three, second baseman Dylan. Swing and a miss of that first pitch. Pretty hefty cut. Where's the butt? Or 
just drops the hands kind of like a push punt, but pulls it back for a ball. One ball, one strike. Fastball high. Two balls, one strike. Fastball off his hands. A little fly ball to shortstop. Let's yeah, handcuffed him again. F6. Yep. I think he, Gavin's getting that ball in on their hands, on the Knights batter's hands. Number seven designated hitter Chase Norton steps in, takes first pitch called strike. Second pitch, a little bender outside. One ball, one strike. Oh, uh, third. Third, again, off his hands, and he fights it off and knocks it right into the first base dugout. His teammates alertly gobble it up. One ball, two strikes to count. Oh, big curveball. Fools him. Called strike three. Looking and sides retired in order. No, got no runs on, no hits. And we'll move to the bottom of the second after this break. The Capitals of Alex Ovechkin are on the tear. The all-time great scored two more goals yesterday as Washington defeated the Winnipeg Jets 3-0 at Capital One Arena. He now has 26 on the season and eight in his last five games. He needs 47 more goals to pass Wayne Gretzky for most in NHL history. Washington's goal each. Six and move them one point ahead of the Red Wings for the second wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. Washington's next game is tomorrow, and it's a, a big one against Detroit. Jays Madison Cinderella run in the NCAA men's basketball tournament ended with a 93-55 drubbing at the hands of the Duke Blue Devils. The 12 seed Dukes pulled off of the upset on Friday against Wisconsin with a 72-61 victory, but did not lead at all in yesterday's game against the Reds. And that's sports. I'm Julio Flores on the Maryland News Network. I'm Dr. Baker, an ER physician. If you're having lead pain, all right, we're back live. And Ethan Georgeoff steps in to lead off the bottom of the second for the Cougars. First pitch taken for a ball. Ethan, the left-handed batting center fielder, ground ball up the middle. Second baseman positioned perfectly. Dylan Ledbetter to first baseman Brett Lucas for the 4-3 put out. That'll bring designated hitter Brady Koenig to the plate. Pitch taken for ball. Second pitch, also a ball. Tyler Hap looking to fight back here. 
two ball, no strike count. And right down the middle. Beautiful pitch. Two balls, one strike to count to Brady. Little cutter there, and Brady fights it off. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Guessing way out in front of that one. Slow ground ball to the shortstop, Freddy Diaz. Strong throw to first. 6-3 for the second out. Keaton Castillo steps in, the third baseman. That's right-handed. Cougars had a little bit of a rally going on in the first inning, they, but they left two batters stranded. Looping liner to the shortstop, unassisted. F6. Three up, three down. And we'll take a break and come back for the third inning. None of those things say wander around a warehouse looking for somebody to help you or walk out not knowing if you got exactly what you need. Nope, you have a list of things and Ace has them from the brands you trust. We also have people who ask the right questions to make sure you get everything you need because at Ace, we have our own list and great service is at the top. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Head over to Cousins Ace Hardware today. Located on North Church Street in Thurmont, Cousins Ace Hardware is a proud sponsor of high school athletics on the radio. with you here at Catoctin High School, the Middletown Knights visiting here against the Catoctin Cougars baseball. I, on the strength of a leadoff Joey Nicholson home run, one nothing Knights as we move to the top of the third and Alex Klink steps in for the Knights. Left-handed batting left fielder takes the first pitch, called strike. Sounds like something happened down at the softball field. <laughs> Here's some cheering. Second pitch also called strike. Well, game changer has an 8-2 Catoctin lead. Third pitch called strike three. Alex down three straight pitches. Brings Joey Nicholson to the plate. See how Gavin approaches Joey after hitting that first pick. So the Knights, off home run over the left field fence. So the Knights have batted through the order here at Cadockton High School. First pitch outside, a little breaking ball for ball one. Hard ground ball up the middle, base hit. Yeah, he jumped on that one. Yeah, great looking baseball swing. And mm -hmm. Right through the box with that base hit. Just got great bat speed. Yep. That brings third baseman Hunter Barnes to the plate. One out. Joey Nicholson on first base. I guess you can see why Coach Baker put him in the uh, leadoff position. <laughs> Last season, 
Hunter was first team CMC. 21 hits, batting average of 328. Takes the first pitch called strike. Looks down to the yeah. Baker, gets the signs at third. Everybody make sure they're on the same page. Joey with a moderate lead at first base. Gavin with a nice move. Ball is just a little bit high. Joey in under. Side one and one. Hunter steps out again, looks for signs. A bunch of deep blue signs by the third base coach. Squares the bunt for a hit, fouls it off the first base side. Moves to one ball, two strikes to Hunter. So was the strategy there to try to move the runner on first around in the scoring position? or, or Yeah, all the way and up? to get, you know, see if he could keep it in and maybe outrun the, the play to first for a base hit. Fights that one off into the ninth dugout again. A lot of guys jumping that time. Nobody had their glove on, so they were hopping instead of trying to. That's appropriate. The ball. Appropriate for Easter week. <laughs> two balls. I check that. One ball, two strikes. The count remains. Here goes the runner. The throw. Ooh, way off. A little offline. It's kind of a delayed still there by Joey. He didn't take off till the ball was into the catcher. He, they could have gotten him. If that throw is on the money, he's out. Yep. Moves the count to even. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Joey on second. Nice change of speed. Gets Hunter out in front of it. He fouls it off. Thompson's talking to himself down there now. Coaching himself up. Yep. He's a practice swing there, and all right, he steps in. It's all on the head. Seventh pitch of this at bat for Hunter. Quality at bat. And takes that one a little tight. Runs the count to full. Coach Baker says, don't let him in there, meaning no strikes. Nicholson running and fouled off. Very aggressive base running by yeah. the Little Town Knights and Joey Nicholson to try to steal third there. Getting a good lead, good jump though. Gavin needs to really change up his timing a little bit on the delivery. Hunter ready to receive the ninth pitch of his at bat. Game of chess going on here on the field with the Hunter stepping out. Yeah, the way things are going, moving along. I don't know how long Tyler will pitch for Middletown, but oh, great piece of hitting. Oh, base hit. Base hit, drops it in. Joey had to hold it second to make sure it would drop. Great at bat for Hunter, and he wins the battle with a base hit to center field on the ninth pitch of his at bat so now brett lucas steps in first baseman had a line drive to left field 
in the first inning. First and third occupied. Catcher DJ Shipkin steps out to put on the play for his infield in case the runner at first takes off. First pitch low. Big situation here for the Middletown Knights. Try to break this open. Pitch outside, gets away from DJ. Runner at third holds. Hunter moves from second, first to second. Two runners in scoring position for the Knights with one out. Two balls, no strikes to count to Lucas. And in the dirt, ball three. Well, at this point, you walk him on, it's really not going to change anything. Yeah, so that actually sets up the force at home. That's what I, yeah, they, that's what they I'm just don't pitch out. Yeah, that's what I figured. Early in the season, though, maybe Coach Franklin wants him to work on it. There it is. Oh, outside. Yeah, that's exactly right. So he walks him on the old-fashioned way. A big, big situation here for... Freddie Diaz, shortstop. Freddie was a second team CMC selection. 362 batting average. Fourth in the order. So you know Coach Baker has a lot of confidence in his at bat. Coach Franklin calls timeout. We'll have a visit to the mound. So what do you think he's going to say to Gavin? Well, Watkins? Is right now, he's not really talking to Gavin. He's talking to his infielders. I think it's just kind of slow things down a little bit for Gavin. Take a couple breaths. Yeah, I believe most of that discussion was directed at the infield. And now he's given a few words of advice to Gavin. Right here, you just got to trust your stuff if you're Gavin. Mm -hmm. So Freddie steps in, one ball, no strikes to count. One out, bases loaded. Fastball well, taken for a strike. Whatever he said, it worked. Threw that one right down the pipe. Yeah, because it's got to keep working those corners, though. Like nice that? Nice pitch, yep. Inside, low at the knees. Freddie fights it off. One ball, two strikes to count. That's Ooh. dangerous. Pick off play, play at second. I like the aggressiveness. The ball was just a little offline. Yeah. Saving, gets... leaping catch by Bryant Green. Kept that ball from going to the outfield. Yeah, that one will cost you a couple runs if it does. Yep. Ooh. Just a little bit outside. Both pitcher and catcher really wanted it. Now the umpire hung tough, said it was low. Shipton's talking to the umpire now and saying, yep. getting some. Two getting balls, some. two strikes, one out. Diaz in back. Little curveball. Beautiful hit. hit. Down the line. It's going to score two. Yes. Great piece of. Hitting by Freddie. 
right down the third base line. Keaton Castello, big effort, but not able to get it. Freddie picks up two RBIs. Score moves to three nothing Middletown. One out. Catcher Andrew Raymond takes the first pitch called strike one. Second pitch bounces in the dirt off and DJ Shipkin blocks it. Bounces off to the first base side. Both runners advance. One ball, one strike to count to Andrew. Left-handed batting catcher. Strike. Well, catcher's a little high too. He's he's a tall he's kid. A tall guy. Yeah, a tall kid. One ball, two strikes to count. One out. Ooh, look out! Another high change up. He was and so far out in front of that. <laughs> he he uh, pulled it right into the fence. Yep. Behind him. Yep. 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 Count remains one ball, two strikes. Ooh, nice pitch. Rings him up on a high breaking ball. Two outs. Ty Lawson steps in, center fielder, out on a 4-3 in the second inning. He should be looking for that curve ball. Held up on that high fastball, caught a ball. Ty squares to bunt, pulls back, and is called strike. One ball, one strike. Nice fastball. Gets past Ty, fouls it back. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, runners on second and third to score three. Nothing Middletown here in the top of the third. Nice change up. Little looper to center field. And the third and final out. F8 if you're scoring at home. One, two. Two hits, three runs. Check that. Two hits, two runs for the Knights. Moves the score to three to nothing. And we'll be back for the bottom of the third.
today's traffic is brought to you by local REMAX Results realtor Kim Clever, licensed in both Maryland and Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Kim Clever, and let's face it, the current real estate market conditions are complicated. I have over 13 years of successfully helping people achieve their real estate dreams. Check out my website at kimclever.com and experience real estate the clever way. Once again, that's kimclever.com. Cool oldies, 1450 for state traffic. This update is brought to you by 8ignoremyscore.com. Well, if you're heading through Frederick at this point, in the southbound side of Route 15 at Modder Avenue, there is a collision. It has been pushed off to the right-hand shoulder. There's bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic very heavy from Route 26, and that continues all the way toward Patrick Street. 270, that's crawling very heavy spots out of Clarksburg, going northbound. That's a very long delay all the way toward Frederick, around toward Route 85. And you're crawling again at Route 15, going northbound through Frederick. This situation. This update is sponsored by Eight Ignore. Credit, low credit, no credit, bankruptcy or divorce. Your job is your ticket to your new vehicle. Go to eight ignoremyscore.com. That's www the number eight ignoremyscore.com. I'm Rick Dixon for a cool oldies fourteen fifty AM. Tyler Happ continuing to pitch for the Middletown Knights with a 3 nothing lead. His teammates have garnered those three runs on three hits, including a solo home run by Joey Nicholson and a two-run double by Freddie Diaz. This is right Dr. Brayden Grable. Grable steps in for his first at bat of the evening. This is where Catoctin really needs to get something going. Yep, he need to get himself on base, gets to the top of the order. Braden, with a 350 batting average last season, was a CMC honorable mention selection. First pitch, Braden drops, tries to drop it down third base line and fouls it off for a strike. Pap showing good velocity on that high fastball. A little change of speed there. Had Braden fighting that one off. Foul ball. No balls, two strikes to count. Ball to shortstop. Diaz up with it. Throws a Dropped little low. It. Not able to be picked by first baseman Lucas and Braden safely aboard. We'll give him an E6. I believe that would be correct. Yep. Ball would have been there in time. Was there in time. Just, just a little low. So Grable does his job as number nine batter in the order, gets himself on base. OBP. Yep. Brian Green comes up. Bryant, his first at bat. There it goes. Double. The hit and run was on on that one. And the little looping liner into left field. Bryant goes two for two here early in the game. Both to left field. First inning had a double down the left field line. And that brings DJ Shipkin to the plate. DJ walked his first at bat in the first inning. Drops it down the third base line. Perfectly placed. Nobody's at first covering. And the bases are loaded. 
will give DJ an infield base hit on that bunt. So you're scoring at home. We got Grable at third, Green at second, Shipkin at first base, and second baseman Jake Bell steps to the plate. Well, that's a no nice. Out. That's a nice setup right there. If anybody can get it done, it's Jake Bell. Yeah, great at bat in the first inning before he was called out on strikes. In the dirt, first here comes the, the runner. To the screen. Pass ball, scores a run. Yep. Braden scores from third. Bryant moves to third, and DJ moves to second. Jake Bell was the CMC second teamer last season with a 365 batting average. 19 hits on the season. He'd love to pick one up here. So timeout. Coach Baker to the mound for a conference. And again, this conference looks mostly directed at the infield, not the pitcher. Down over the hill, it's 12 to 2. Catoctin now 13 to 2. Bottom of the third inning. Wow. Cougar bats hot. They hot. scored a winning walk off base hit last week against Liberty and, and they're having their way with Middletown pitching here today down over the hill. Well, it looks like their starting pitcher is going to be Aubrey Courtney and. Uh, We'll be covering their game next Wednesday. Or this Wednesday. This, Two this days. We, that's what I meant. This Wednesday yes. at Walkersville. And hopefully the uh, weather holds out for us. Yeah, I, I know. It's I was always looking at advanced a little bit. Looks like it's a 50 50 chance. Mm -hmm. It's so. always a 50 50 chance in March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jake steps in. One ball, no strikes to count. No outs. Ball in the dirt. Two balls, no strikes. So Tyler was kind of cruising along until this bottom of the third inning. Ooh, Ooh a little tentative on that strike call, huh? Yeah. He, he, he didn't, he, the umpire did not Signal that with strength and, and resolve. Yeah, a little delay in the reaction. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to count. That one drops off the plate and call ball three. Three balls, one strike. Oh, four. He takes that one for a ball. Same, pretty much the same location as the previous pitch, and Jake watched it go down. And yeah, he he <laughs> stayed at the bat, stayed at the plate a little bit longer, waiting for the umpire to make the decision. That brings the dangerous Garrett Worth to the plate with bases loaded and no outs. Scores now Middletown three. Knights there goes one. the ball. It's passed. Doesn't this get one's going to be close. Him. Oh, got him. Yep. So the, the runner went. Got past the catcher, Raymond, but he got caught up in the high grass. Bryant not able to make it from third to home. So and you knew about. You knew about a third of the way down the line this was not going to be good because you're right. It that ball just kind of died right there, literally eight, nine feet from the plate. Exactly right. An easy toss to the pitcher for the out. Count one ball, no strikes to Garrett. Garrett was also a CMC second team selection last year. 
20 RBIs, 386 batting average. He launches this one to right field, medium depth. Right fielder circles under it. Strong throw is cut by the first baseman. And home safe. And then into the dirt and bounces away. So DJ scores on the sack fly. Got Jake done. Bell moves to third. Credit Garrett with the RBI moves the score to three to two Middletown here in the bottom of the third with two outs. Mason Farrell steps to the plate with a runner, Jake Bell on third base. First pitch, nice. Outside corner called strike one. Fastball right across the waist. Ooh, that one kind of died. Umpire likes those low ones. It does. Called strike. No balls, two strikes. That one breaks outside. Farrell went out after that one. He's guarding that plate right now yep. with that closed stance in the batter's box. One ball, two strikes to count. Hap would love to get out of this with the lead intact. Slow to second, 4-3 for the put out, but not before the Cougars bring two home to close the score to Middletown three, Catoctin two, and we'll be back for the fourth inning. Where do you get your real-time information? News, weather, traffic, school delays, and cancellations. At Cool 1450 AM, one of our most important resources is Frederick Scare. Um, live traffic cam. Working or traveling in around Frederick should bookmark FrederickScanner.com on their PC or go to their Facebook page and download the mobile app today. FrederickScanner.com, a live information window to Frederick County. E-bikes are the latest trend in urban and suburban transportation. Pedal or throttle, exercise or relax. E-bikes are everywhere now in our area. Fredericktown Yamaha Cycle Company is Frederick County's largest supplier of pedal-assisted e-bikes. Fredericktown Yamaha is a supplier of Yamaha, Giant, and intense electric bikes. From open road to crosstown commutes, mountain bikes, and more, Fredericktown Yamaha specializes in two wheels and a motor. Since 1975, located just off Urbana Pike in Frederick. Check out our website at fredericktownyamaha.com. Fredericktown Yamaha, where the fun begins. change for the Cougars. Patrick Moreland in in relief of Gavin Watkins. Gavin went three innings. We saw Patrick the other night versus Liberty pitched the seventh inning. Solid one inning outing. Yeah, he had um, good command. Uh, a good, a really nice breaking ball that uh, gave uh, right-handed hitters fits. Yeah, and he should be a great change of pace for the hard throwing Gavin Watkins. To start us off here in the top of the fourth, Dylan Ledbetter steps in for the Knights. Second baseman had a little pop up to shortstop his first at bat. Takes the first pitch called strike. Second pitch, also a knock 
This one foul. No balls, two strikes. So Patrick off to a good start with his first at bat here in the top of the fourth. Oh, nice pitch. Must have broke outside, and the umpire waves outside. One ball, two strikes to count to Dylan. Patrick throws that little curveball down and away, and Dylan fouls it off over the first base dugout. Ricochets off the shed there. Count remains one ball, two strikes. Just outside. Sneaky fastball right there. Called ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Dylan fouls that one back. Stays alive. Dylan calls for time, steps out, back in, resets. Ooh, ties him up, a high breaking ball that, in on the hands, called strike three. That's the pitch we were talking about yep. right there. And when he throws that in on the right hander's hands, and breaks over the plate. It's hard to react to swing. Chase Norton steps in. Got he, that's another one right there, a beauty. Yep. Had the batter backing out, thinking it was coming right at him. Yep. It broke right over the plate for the strike. Fights that one off down the first baseline, out of play. Watch Moreland when he gets on the rubber. Hey, he's got, he's got this little happy feet thing where he, he goes left, right, left, right. He just kind of dance, does a little dance there right before he releases. Watch. See it? Kind of rocks back and forth, left front, right front. Yeah, it's going to be interesting when runner gets on base what the umpires say about that. Yeah, watch him. He, watch him again right here. Watch. See that little, see that? He lifts that mm -hmm. foot up. I sure do. He lifts that foot a little bit yeah. right there that time. So that was called ball, so it evens the count. Two balls, two strikes now, the count to Chase. Setting him up for that inside curveball. There it was. <laughs> yep, bites it off. He just check swing that one, just yep. staying alive. talking about needing how many pitchers and stuff last game a bit called strike sneaks that sneaky fastball by him for the second out of the inning both called strikes and I talked about you know you need at least five solid arms yeah when I was looking at Catoctin's lineup and coach has positions one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven players he he'll add the pitcher position to them. So we might see a lot of different arms through the course of this Catoctin High School season. Good, good, because what they're looking for is, you know, development of a rotation as they move towards the playoffs and, and a good, strong, solid uh, lineup of pitchers is, is something you'll never go deep in the playoffs without it. That's right. So Alex takes first pitch, fouls it off the third baseline. This one he fouls up the first baseline. Assistant coach Mike Minch, bare hand gra grab down that first baseline. Impressive catch. Runs the count to no balls, two strikes. Here comes the stuff. Fastball. Good mix up. Good mix. Came in high with a fastball. Yep. That's setting up this 
little breaker out over the plate. Oh, got over top of that for a ball. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Curveball. There it is. Wow, three. what an impressive performance for Moreland yep. in the top of the fourth inning here. Yep. We'll take a break. Be back for the bottom of the fourth. Stockton coming to bat. Six eight in Thurmont is amazing. Not only do they support local high school sports on the radio, but they have great food, great fun, and they constantly serve our community in so many ways. Check out their Facebook page, American Legion Post 168, to find out about their exciting events. And be sure to say thank you for supporting our local community. And don't you forget to say thank you every time you see them for their selfless sacrifice in military service to our country. Thanks, American Legion Post 168. We salute you. Stockton High School getting ready for the bottom of the fourth at bat of the Stockton Cougars. And we have a pitching change, Wyatt Hopson. The left-hander will take over for Middletown here in the fourth inning. Wyatt's a returner from last year's squad. Impressive stats. Let's see where I found. Check that, that was a different Wyatt. Lefty Hobson getting ready to face Ethan Georgeoff, Brady Koenig, Keaton Castello in that order. Left-handed center fielder George off, get us started here in the fourth. He was out on a second base to first base ground ball in the second inning. Now you can see Middletown catcher put his earpiece in his right ear. Well. A little Bluetooth there, huh? Technical <laughs> difficulty right now. Trying to get things situated. Ethan steps in, first pitch. Takes for high ball one. looking fastball there called strike one ball one strike to Ethan outside ball two left-handed pitcher left-handed batter always makes it difficult and that arm is coming right at you Foul ball up over our heads into the trees in left field. Evens account, two balls, two strikes. 
Middletown holds the lead three to two here in the bottom of the fourth. Uh, a little change up way off and in the dirt. Yep. Ethan picked that up early, jumped out of the way. Count moves to full. As a batter, you got to love a full count because you know you're getting the pitch. Oh, 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 oh. sneaky fastball yeah. right past him. Indeed. Swing and a miss for a strike three. Out number one here in the bottom of the fourth. Brady Koenig steps in. Brady was out shortstop the first base in the second inning. Tony got that sweeping the plate style at the batter's box. Takes. Nice. See we could see that one coming from up here. Yeah, a slow breaking ball. Take called strike one. Nice line drive right up the middle. Back through the box for Brady. Gets on with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Brings Keaton Castello to the plate. Third baseman Keaton, F6 in the second inning. Brady takes a moderate lead at first base. Keaton fights that and off, drops it in the center field. Back-to-back -back base hit for the Cougars. Braden Grable comes in to the plate. The right fielder got on in the bottom of the third on an error, started off that the run scoring for the Cougars. So with no outs, you see if Coach Franklin puts the bunt into play. Ooh, nice one. Actually, too direct at the pitcher. Yeah, you're right. So on the bunt attempt, back to the pitcher. Keaton Castello is out 1-6 at second base. Fielder's choice for Braden puts him on first, and Brady Koenig moves up to third. Tying run at third base. One out here in the bottom of the fourth, and Bryant Green, who is two for two on the day, would love to pick up an RBI. with a decent lead at first. He holds, first pitch, curveball. Breaks in over the inside corner. Called strike one. Yes, two outs in the inning. Throw to first. Braden back in, standing up. Coach Franklin calls out the number of the play for his offense. Big lead at first base this time. And they got him picked off. And they're trying to come home. And he's safe at home. What great base running by the Catoctin Cougars. 
to challenge that hot box. The yep. runner came home. Just some solid base running, yep. well coached. Freddie, one too many steps at shortstop before he could deliver home. Brady slides in before the tag, ties the game up three to three, and Braden Grable moves up to second. One strike to count to Bryant Green. Outside corner called strike. That was his pitch right there. Yeah, that's the one he serves in the left field. So now with no balls, two strikes, Bryant looking to protect at the plate. Serves it to left field, but right to the left fielder. Yeah, took one step and made the catch. Alex Klink brings it in for the third out. Catoctin ties the game at three to three by pushing in one run there on the uh, stolen base. We'll take a break and be back for the fifth inning, three to three here at Catoctin High School. They're whittling away at it. Hawkins Landscaping, locally owned and operated for over 50 years. Winner nine years in a row for the best of the best in Frederick County. Let our professionally trained staff of certified landscapers transform your yard from a dream to reality. Hawkins Landscaping specializes in elegant and inviting outdoor environments. If you're looking to create, upgrade, or revitalize your outdoor space, Call Hawkins Landscaping today at 301-898-3615. That's 301-898-3615. Hawkins Landscaping. When you deserve the best, get the best. Everyone in Thermont knows and respects Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. And we're back. Patrick Morgan, first delivery ball. Joey Nicholson steps in. Joey two for two on the day. Two runs scored, a solo home run. Would love to get things going here for his team. Top of the fifth with the score tied. Takes first two pitches, both balls. In the dirt, ball three. Joey to stay aggressive here at the plate. Even with the count three and oh. Clearly has the power to knock it out as he showed us in the first inning. Takes a strike. Takes that one low and inside for another called strike. Moves the count to full. Joey serves that fastball into right center field. Perfect place between the two outfielders. And he hustles into second one, slotting double. Good aggressive base running. Ball was perfectly placed in the outfield grass between the right fielder and center fielder. Uh, 
Hunter Barnes steps in. Hunter one for two on the day with one run scored already. Katakin corners up, looking for a possible bunt. Delivery from Patrick. Called strike. Morning with that little late break. Patrick turns and takes a throw to second base. Joey back in standing up. Batter calls time, steps out. Big situation here. Top of the order for the Knights. Joey Nicholson will let off with a double. Healthy cut there by Hunter. Fouls it back. Right off the mask of the catcher and into the screen. Nicholson three for three on the day. Fastball. Get some swinging. He has great control of that curveball and really starts to get the batters always expecting the curveball. So great mixing there. Fastball gets him. Brett Lucas steps in. Brett 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. Late break called strike one. Pulls him on that one, and Brett way out ahead. Stockton Lady Cougars defeated the Middletown Knights 16 to two. Wow, that was a time when those two teams would play close every year. And Joey steals third base. Steps out. Oh, yeah. yes. Nice pitch. Just nicked the edge of the outside strike zone. Patrick working ahead. Threw some yep. heat that time. Yep. Outside, try to get him to fish. <laughs> Low. Two balls, two strikes to count. Run, Joey. Base hit. Oh, oh got away from gobbles him. up. Shortstop Brian Green un unable to handle that hard off the ridge there of the grass and the dirt. I I'm not official score, but I'm gonna credit him with a base hit. And RBI for 
threat. Yeah, Artie a, Diaz steps in. That was a tough ball to field, let alone throw to first. For the inning ending out. There's two he has got a Jimmy. nice breaking ball. Yep. And he has different speeds on that breaking ball. That one hangs up inside. On ball one strike. Side ball two, two balls, one strike. Moreland sets, runners off. DJ's throws late. Brett Lucas still second base. Yeah, Moreland pitch out on that as the runner went off, but Shifton couldn't make the throw. Got stuck in his glove a little. Freddie swings through that breaking ball. Count moves it. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Lucas on second. In the dirt. Uh, uh, I had that wrong. Ball four. Coach Baker calls timeout. He wants to talk to his batter. So Freddie works a walk. He moves down to first base with Brett at second base. One run already in here for the Knights. Andrew, check that. Number 15, Keller Routson batting in the Andrew Raymond spot. First pitch called strike. Ooh. Second pitch. Way out in front of that one. Yep. Patrick way ahead. No balls. Two strikes. Batter steps out. Oh. Third or first gets away and the runners advance. Yep. Try a pickoff play at first base. Balls got past. The first baseman, I don't know if he lost it in the sun. No, the runner actually blocked his, his view of the ball coming. Stab. He couldn't see the ball, the trajectory of the ball, because the runner ran right in front of it. And for a split second, he had to readjust, and by that time, the ball was past him. Yep. So we got Lucas moves up to third, Diaz to second. I think they're going to ask... Why only one? On the overthrow. Yeah, because if the pitcher stepped back first, he becomes a fielder. But base umpire affirms his decision, and we're back to play. Catoctin brings the entire infield into the grass, try to knock down any more runs, already trailing four to three. Big situation here. Keller routes and pinch hitting for Andrew Raymond. Swing and a miss. Gets a huge strikeout there for the second out of the inning. Runners remain at second and third. Ty Lawson steps in. 
high, 0 for 2 on the day. First pitch in the dirt. DJ blocks it, keeps it in front of them. Runners hold. Left-handed Lawson against the right-handed curveball pitching Patrick Morlin. Hangs up. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. And they're going to intentionally walk tie. Load the bases with two outs. Now you've got the force at home. Yep. So any base gets it done. So number three, the second baseman, Dylan Ledbecker, Ledbetter, steps in for the Knights. Bases loaded, two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Four to three, Knights with the one run lead. Tries to hold up the swing, but called swinging strike one. Strike two. Patrick got Dylan looking in the fourth inning to lead off the fourth. See if we can get him here to close out the fifth. And he did. Yes. So his teammates come out. So the ninth strand three. Punch one across for the lead. Four to three here. And we'll get ready to move to the bottom of the fifth after this short break. Thermont Country Kitchen, conveniently located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. It's just like home, only they do the dishes. Huh. Family owned and operated since 1984, Thermont Country Kitchen has something for everyone. Handicap accessible, we're your choice for small gatherings or parties, and we cater too. Thermont Country Kitchen's owners, Sherry and Rob, recently received the You Make Thermont Proud Award. And hey, speaking of awards, their roasted chicken is the best in Maryland, hands down. Thermont Country Kitchen's menu is unbelievable with something for everyone. Check them out today. Thermont Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this important message. Here's another cool oldies 1450 reminder. The Thermont Food Bank located on Old Frederick Road in the Old Town Office Building near the Hunting Creek Bridge opens Tuesdays from 5 to 7 p.m. and Fridays from 4 to 6 p.m. Bring a picture ID with you to receive free food and learn about local resources for those in need. And for more information, you can call 240-288-1865 or go online to Thermont foodbank.com to learn about this event and more go online to wthuradio.com at cool oldies 1450 we care about our community and you hey, welcome back to Catoctin high school we're ready to start the bottom of the fifth middletown pitcher wyatt hobson his second inning in relief First pitch swing, DJ Shipton fouls it off. Knights took a four to three lead by scratching one across in the bottom of the, or oh, the top of the fifth.
curveball hangs outside. Ball one strike. Change up. Two balls, one strike. Nice-looking pitch. Mm -hmm. All the fans here in their lounge chairs with their blankets wrapped around them and enjoying the game here. As that sun sets behind us, shadows on the field. Two balls, two strikes, the count to DJ. Fouls that one up the third baseline. Foul. Stays alive. Oh. Good old happy dance to get out of the way yeah. of that one. He avoids getting hit somehow. Runs the count to full. Foul ball, heading right our way. Third baseman camping under it. Oh, nice play. The wind kind of blew that around a little bit. Third baseman Hunter Barnes able to corral it for the first out. Wind, wind's starting to pick up here. Yep. Blowing right to left. Pop out to the third baseman. F5 if you're scoring at home. Jake Bell steps in. Jake for one in the afternoon. Strikeout and a walk. Takes first pitch low. Ball one. That change up of his really dies at the plate. Easy to see. Not much of a pitch. And then he comes at you with the heat. <laughs> yeah, one pitch is meant to be a strike, and the other one's meant just to change things up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Slow breaker. Yep. One ball, two strikes to count to Jake. Foul tipped into the catcher's glove. Wyatt Hobson working here in his second inning. Swing and a miss. Mm. So two up, two down here in the uh, bottom of the home half of the fifth. Garrett Worth steps in. Garrett 0 for 1 in the afternoon, 6-3 in the first, sacrifice in the third. Love to get something he could drive right here with two outs and nobody on. Off the end of the bat, center fielder camps under it, Ty Lawson, F8. Three up, three down, great inning for pitcher Wyatt Hobson and the Middletown Knights and we move to the top of the sixth. Middletown holding a one run for the lead. Pointing 50 a.m. forecast.
for this afternoon, an abundance of sunshine, high 58, mainly clear tonight, low 34. Increasing clouds Tuesday, the high 58. Clouds scattered showers for Tuesday night, the low 44. Wednesday, clouds showers are likely, the high 56. Clouded partly sunny with For the 1450 AM Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. All right, we're back with you here live. The first pitch is in the dirt from Patrick Moreland. Pat, Patrick in his third inning of work, and we have a pinch hitter for Middletown. Number 24, Owen Clayball, steps in. Ball in the dirt. One ball, one strike the count to Owen. Coach Baker utilizing his bench, keeping his players all involved. Takes called strike two. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Patrick gets him first out here in the top of the sixth inning. Steps in. Looks to push a bunt down the third baseline and it rolls foul. Clink 0 for 2 on the night. Both strikes out. Looking. Drops the hands again, pulls them back, takes ball. One ball, one strike. Ball in the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Line drive in the left center field, perfectly placed. Drops. Alex slides safely in the second with a double. Saw the line drive there by Alex on that high curve ball. Served it in the left field. Hustled in the second. And that brings Joey Nicholson to the plate. Joey, three for three on the day. Big situation here for the Knights to get an insurance run. One out, runner on second. First pitch in the dirt. Breaking ball called for a strike. Hard 
yard through the infield, no. Brian Green keeps it in the infield, infield base hit. Joey perfect on the day, four for four. Pushes the runner over to third. So with Alex on third, Joey Nicholson on first, one out. Hunter Barnes steps in. Steps off, surveys the situation. DJ calls timeout. Goes out and has a word with Patrick Marlin. Hunter, one for three on the evening. Base hit, run scored in the third. Oh, throw to first a little high. <laughs> oh. Mason able to pull that one in. He had to jump up in the air, and he's not very tall, so he really had to jump. Quick reflexes yeah. to keep that one in. That gets by him and another run comes in. Pitch drops slow. Hey, hey. <laughs> Third base coach, handful of signs and Joey's off. Ball's in the dirt. He's safely in the second. So now we know what that sign is. <laughs> That's the steal. Just got to pick up the indicator there. Yep. Yep. So runners on second and third. One out. Two balls, no strikes to count to Hunter. Patrick sets. Also low. Little head game going on over here in third base as the runner took off. Moreland saw it out of his peripheral and gets a nice secondary lead. Oh, center fielder tracking it down. Nice. The runner the goes back to third. Tag. Balls in the infield. Alex scores. Joey moves up. Credit Hunter with a sacrifice fly and an RBI. So Coach Franklin's out to uh, have a chat with the base umpire about legal tags. So we have two outs. Brett Lucas steps in. <laughs> Hear what he said when he came back in the dugout? He said that wasn't even close. <laughs> yeah, but nobody was looking. That's the problem. With with multiple runners on, you would think they'd watch the third base runner before you worry about the second base runner. So first pitch swing and a miss by Brett. Brett's one for two on the day with a base hit and a walk. Called strike two. Patrick gets quickly ahead. But Middletown picked up that insurance run and now leads five to three here in the top of the sixth.
We'll set the stage here. We have runners on first and third. Okay. Brett Lucas on third. Freddie Diaz on first. The score, six to three, Middletown Knights with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Middletown with single runs in the first, two in the third, single run in the fifth, two in the sixth. <laughs> Talking two runs, two in runs the third, in the third, single run, single in the run in the six to three. six to three. Nice with the nice lead. with the lead. moved from right field to center field and it looks like Patrick Moreland from pitcher to right field Ethan George off in relief Ke Keller Routson steps in for the Middletown Knights his second at bat of the evening first pitch ball Freddy Diaz steals uncontested at second. Pitch was a called ball for two balls, no strikes. So deep, deep to center, and it's out of here. A three-run shot by pinch hitter Keller Routson in his second at bat. Big shot, dead center field, just made defense. Punches three more across for the Middletown Knights. Five runs across here in the sixth inning for Middletown. Left-handed batter Ty Larson, Lawson, center fielder steps in. Hard push bunt, throws the first base, and Ethan makes the toss to first. 1-3, you're scoring at home. Middletown, five runs here in the top of the sixth. Take a commanding 9-3 lead into the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back. <laughs> You have a list of things. None of those things say wander around a warehouse looking for somebody to help you or walk out not knowing if you got exactly what you need. Nope, you have a list of things and Ace has them from the brands you trust. We also have people who ask the right questions to make sure you get everything you need because at Ace, we have our own list and great service is at the top. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Head over to Cousins Ace Hardware today. Located on North Church Street in Thurmont, Cousins Ace Hardware is a proud sponsor of high school athletics on the radio. We hope you're enjoying the game. Let's hear a special message from another one of our fantastic sponsors. Everyone in Thurmont knows and respects Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. Welcome back.
back, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. Back at Dockton High School, where Middletown has jumped out to a commanding 9-3 lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yep. And Wyatt Hobson makes his, starts the third inning in relief. First pitch to Mason Farrell, fouled back. I was just going through Middletown's lineup and Coach Baker has utilized all but two of his reserves so far. So he's getting everybody in the action. Catching now is number five, Easton Metrol. Second pitch. Ball, one ball, one strike, they count. Mason looking to pick up his first hit of the evening, 0 for 2. Fly out to center field, out on second base to first base, ground ball. Fouls that pitch back. One ball, two strikes, the count. Her ball stays outside. Evens the count, two and two. Ooh, another curveball hangs outside. Umpire shakes his head, no, not quite. Runs the count to full. Three balls, two strikes to Mason Farrell. High, ball four. Good bat for him. Yep. Nice Mason patient. Gets himself bat. on base. You don't need all six runs this nope. inning if you're a Catoctin, just a couple. Get Cougars have two at bats in. left. One yep. in the sixth in, another one in the seventh to close it out. So, you get a couple here and a couple there and you win. So center fielder now turn relief pitcher Ethan Georgeoff steps in. Ooh, high infield fly ball. Ooh. First baseman trying to camp under it. Brett Lucas fights the breeze and pulls it in. That was a tough out right there. <laughs> that ball had a moved. major league pop up, right? That ball was moving up in the stratosphere. And drifting from yeah. first base towards second base. Brady Koenig steps in. Brady one for two in the night with a run scored. First pitch stays outside. Mason easily back in to first. Low and inside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Here in the bottom of six with Middletown leading nine to three. Inside corner called strike. A little cutter there. Two balls, one strike to count. Fought that off in the right field. F9. Joey Nicholson, Roman out there in right field. Sun under that one. Sun just low enough over the mountains to not give that right fielder a hard time like he earlier in the game. Yes, he Tough shades his eyes he's now. Shades his eyes, but he's standing right in that yeah. sun gap. Yeah, but when the balls hit up above the sun, 
like you say, because the sun's getting down close to the mountaintop here. Well, the hard part with that is you get you got shadows in that right field. We can see them from here. Yep. So you don't you know as you move to adjust to the ball, you're going in and out of sun. Keaton Castello steps in for his third at bat. Keaton one for two on the afternoon with a base hit and a pop up to the shortstop. Works to count two balls, no strikes. High. Three and oh. Love to get on base here. Throw to first. Just keeping him honest. Yeah, I don't think Mason's going anywhere, but just if he falls asleep, we'll pick him off. And it's an easy step and throw for a left handed pitcher. Pitch. Right at the Three knees. Balls, strike. Ooh. One. Three balls, one strike. Takes again. Runs the count to full. And he, Keaton fouls that one off. Stays Two alive. Out, full count. Run on anything. Going on delivery. As Coach Franklin reminds him, just make sure the pitcher throws home before you take off. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a steal. You don't want to get caught. Oh. I got him looking. Low fastball called strike three. Puts down Katakton, not able to punch any across there. Score remains nine to three, and we move to the top of the seventh. We'll be right. We interrupt our regular programming to bring you this special Cool Oldies 1450 sports presentation. restaurant it's the diner and you won't find a better one than the mountain view diner it's the ultimate comfort food from delicious appetizers to sandwiches to succulent entrees the mountain view diner can satisfy any taste if it's mouth water and greek fare you're after the mountain view diner will not disappoint and don't forget the famous cheesecake mountain view diner on west patrick street in frederick and in charlestown west virginia across from the casino a winner three years in a row for a best of frederick award the people who love great food eat at the people's restaurant the Mountain View Diner. We are back here live for the last inning of the game. We're in the top of the seventh. Middletown's at the plate. Second baseman Dylan Ledbetter leads off. Ethan George, George Off's first delivery ball. Ethan in his second inning of work. Dylan 0 for 3 on the night. Would love to pick up that first base hit. A little sidearm delivery. Stayed inside. Called strike. Two balls, one strike. The count. Call 
call or strike two. Moves the count even. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball to shortstop. Brian Green picks it up, throws to first, one out. Six three. Scoring at home. Number eighteen, Eddie McLean steps in to bat. His first at bat of the evening. First pitch called strike. Swing and a miss, strike two. Fouls that one off. Stung his hands on that one. And he stays alive. Count remains no balls, two strikes. One out here in the top of the seventh. He gets a hold of that. Line drive to center fielder for the out. Now roaming center field. Alex Klink steps in for his fourth at bat. Takes first pitch strike. Alex a double run scored. Last inning. Call strike two. High fastball. One ball, two strikes to count. Low. Two balls, two strikes. Working around that strike zone. Good sidearm with that one. No dirt. Gonna stick with it. Full count. Swing and a miss. Got nice fastball. Retires him in order. And we'll move to the bottom of the seventh with Cougars eating a bunch of runs down nine to three. Be right back. Six Eight in Thurmont is amazing. Not only do they support local high school sports on the radio, but they have great food, great fun, and they constantly serve our community in so many ways. Check out their Facebook page, American Legion Post 168, to find out about their exciting events. And be sure to say thank you for supporting our local community. And don't you forget to say thank you every time you see them for their selfless sacrifice in military service to our country. Thanks, American Legion Post 168. We salute you. <laughs> Back for our last at bat for the Cougars, bottom of the seventh inning. And a chance to pull this out, but they're down by six runs, so they need 
one big rally here as the sun set over the mountains and the field is completely dark now in the shadows. And we have a perfect view of the scoreboard now. All the lights shine brightly. So Wyatt Hobson in his fourth inning of work here in relief for the Knights. And he'll face Braden Grable here in the bottom of the seventh. Somehow that pitch missed him. Braden 0 for 2 with a run scored. Got on on an error and sure. Fielder's Choice is second at bat. Takes first two pitches for ball. Just trying to set the table. Ninth man in the order. Get himself one base. That ball stays high. 3 0. Oh. <clears throat> Strike one. I went in there at the knees. Really shipped on top of the plate there with the three. Ball count. Ooh, ball that dirt. Dirt. A lead off walk here for the Cougars on the bottom of the seventh. Down nine to three. Frank Green steps in for his fourth at bat here this evening. It's two for three. Double, single, and a fly out to left field. First pitch high. I don't see anybody getting loose for Middletown. Wyatt struggling with control right here in top of the seventh. Ball stays outside. Two balls, no strikes. Braden works the throw to first. How to pitcher Wyatt Hobson. I don't think he's stealing down nine to three. <laughs> I don't either. He's just playing games over there. That's so why I was laughing. Wyatt tossed over. Little breaking ball. In for a call and strike. Two balls, one that, strike. They count. That only his second strike in six pitches. Ooh. Yeah. The crowd oohed on that one. That was close. Three and one. Brian Green. And now they just called a balk. On the pitcher, he yeah. hands to the mouth while in touch with the rubber. Ah, they warned him about that. Yeah, they warned the previous pitcher anyway. I don't know if they warned oh, Wyatt or not. Oh, that's right. You're right. He should need it. So, Braden moves up to second. 3-1 to Brian. And in the dirt. And it bounces away. Braden moves up. So Grable on third, Green on first, nobody out, and Coach Baker coming in for pitching change. Can he make a change cold like that? Well, it depends who's coming in. If it's a, somebody that was in the field, it gets his seven pitches to warm up. Mm -hmm. And it looks like second baseman. Is that number 15? No. Yeah, it's 15. Yes, Keller Routson takes over.
<laughs> I said, uh, yeah, the, the, the toxin dugout asked, what number is he in there? Coach said 12, and he goes, really? And he goes, oh, no, 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> He knows who he is, just doesn't know the jersey number he wears. Right. And then well, number 12, Vinny Grossman, moves to second base for the Knights. Comes out of the dugout. Kicking some dirt there on the mound as he warms up. Yeah, he's trying to fill in that hole left by the previous pitchers. Yeah, because he's stepping right into the hole and he's tripping on it. See that delivery right there? Yep. Yeah. That explains it. So we got what? No out? Nobody out. Runners on, Runners on the corner. First and third. Cougar's six down runs. by six. Yep. Take take a couple bloops in the blast. Congratulations, the Lady Cougars moved to 2-0 and oh on the season with a big win over Middletown here earlier. They'll uh, face Walkersville, a formidable opponent on Wednesday. Walkersville, a very good softball team. Yep, pretty much everybody back from last year's team at Walkersville three or four college commits of their senior class already. So, yeah, very talented group. We'll bring you that game live Wednesday. That's the 27th. First pitch at 4.30 p.m. from Walkersville. That's Catoctin at Walkersville here on Cool Oldies 14. So big situation, first and third, nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. You do have a little cushion to work with. Pitcher Keller Routes, Ooh. senior. He's got some heat. First pitch low, ball one. He throws a little bit harder than the, his predecessor. Got some velocity on that ball. Just a little high. Just got to get it over now. There he goes. He got one in. Outside corner. Two balls, one strike to count. DJ one for two on the day, a walk and a base hit. Pops this and down the right field line, out of play. Evens account, two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Keller Routson with the easy motion and then a little bit of heat on that fastball. A little change up there. DJ fights it off, stays alive. Count remains two and two. Good hard fastball. Little town looks to turn two balls in the dirt. There goes a runner oh. home. Oh, they got the throw. No. Oh, and he can't bring it down. So the run scores. So Braden Grable scores from third on the fielder's choice. Brian Green forced out at second. DJ on the airs. They called the double play. The runner did not slide. So even the errant throw, 
the one runner. run in, but two outs. So the runner at first was out? Yes, because the runner at second didn't get down. Automatic double play. Oh, off his foot. So two outs here in the bottom of the seventh, nine to four, Middletown with the lead. Jake Bell at the plate. No balls, two strikes to count as he walks off the foul ball that just bounced off his foot. So the bad errant throw to first allowed the run to score, but the runner at first was called out. And and that's why Coach Franklin was Yeah, it, I'm a little confused. Why didn't they just dead ball it? And he would have stayed on third. But anyway, little looper to left. Tyler also there to pull it catch. in, third and final out. And that's the ball game. So Middletown, victorious nine to four over Catoctin here. Yeah, big five run, six inning to really open things up. That and was the rally. The winning, push the winning runs across. But I'll tell you what, a lot of, lot of balls put in play, a lot of nice defensive plays, a few miscues. But, yeah, two good, really solid baseball teams right here. It's going to be interesting to watch them as the season progresses. And a very good game for them early in the season, a good tune-up to get them going and learn a little bit about their own chemistry. And, uh, you know, it's a good yep. good game. Yep. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll wrap it up and get out of here. We'll see you Wednesday night over at Walkersville. We'll Catoctin at Walkersville softball. We'll be right back. Good night, all. Don't worry if you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast. All of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHUradio.com. In